In many situations, we may have to encounter the expression a times sin x plus b times cos x. And the truth is that we can actually find some capital A and alpha so that the left hand side is equal to capital A times cosine of x plus alpha. Notice that the left hand side we have both the sine and cosine functions. However, they have to have the same angle right here, and I just put down x right here. When you have this situation, and sometimes when you're doing integrations, or maybe some physics equations, or maybe differential equations, or things like that, it's a good idea to combine this expression into just a function of cosine like this. And you may be wondering, can we have just a sine function right here? And the answer to that is yes, but I'll leave that to you guys. In this video, I'll just show you guys how to find the conditions on the capital A and alpha. And if you want to have a sign right here, okay, the process is really similar, so you just try it on your own. Anyway, how can we do this? Hmm. Okay, we see that we have an angle sum right here, x plus alpha. And hopefully you guys have seen my videos on how to derive the angle sum formula for cosine. Maybe if you haven't, it's okay, I have not heard, but you know, just go watch the videos in the description, right? I will write this down for you guys. The result of this is going to be cosine of the first angle, which is x, times cosine of the second angle, which is alpha, and then minus sine of the first angle, which is x, times sine of the second angle, which is alpha, okay? And then, of course, we still have the capital A in the front, so let's write that down. And of course, we have to have the parentheses. And as always, we will have to distribute the capital A into the parentheses, right? And when we distribute, I will also like to rearrange things a little bit. Because, as you can see, on the left-hand side, we have A times sine x. And this part, it's the only part that has the sine x, okay? In fact, I will put the x in the, no, at the end, you'll see. Anyway, when I do this times that, let me just write down A times this, but let me write down the alpha part right here first. So I'll put down cosine alpha and then cosine x. I just rearrange this a little bit. They are just the multiplications anyway, right? Okay, and then this is going to be a minus a times this. So I'll put down a and I'll write down sine alpha first and then sine x. And why did I do this? Well, if you compare the left hand side and the right hand side, this is the coefficient of sine x. This is the coefficient of sine x, right? So if you want to make sure the left hand side is the same as the right hand side, we must have little a to be the same as minus capital A times sine alpha. And indeed, that's the first condition right here. So let me just write this down. We must have the first one, and let me write this down first, negative a times sine alpha, this has to be the same as little a like this, right? And of course, similarly, we must have little b to be the same as capital A times cosine alpha, so that's the second condition. So let me put that down. So we have capital A times cosine alpha, this has to be the same as little b. Okay, keep in mind, our goal is to find the conditions on capital A and alpha. And little a and little b, they are supposed to be given, right? <laughs> and of course, we have to assume that little a and little b, they are not both equal to zero. And in fact, I don't want anyone to be zero because suppose if a is zero right here, it's boring because you have just this part already, which is easy enough to deal with, right? Although this formula is still going to work, but you know, why bother with this? But anyway, this is what we have. This is equal to that. This is equal to that. Take a look. Why don't we divide, divide? And this is good because of the sign on the top over cosine. When you divide this out, just take a look. We will end up with negative sine alpha over cosine alpha. It's nicely equal to tangent alpha, right? And that's equal to a over b, okay? And of course, we can just bring the negative to the other side. So we have tangent alpha is equal to negative a over b like this. And I'm not going to take the inverse tangent for you guys because 
you may be able to find a lot of the alpha that will make this work. So in fact, I will just tell you guys, this is the condition on how you can find the alpha. You may have different answers than your friends or whatsoever, okay? But let me just write this down for you guys. Okay, on the other hand, what can we do? Well, earlier I just divided, which is nice because A and A cancel out, right? But now I'm not going to divide. Let's do the following right here. An easy way to do this is that let's just go ahead, square both sides here, square both sides here, okay? And when you do that, you will see negative square, which is just going to be positive, and we will have A square, and then this is sine square alpha, and then that's equal to A square, right? Okay, and on the second equation right here, we will have A square cosine square alpha, and that's equal to delta B square, like this. And now we are going to just add these two equations together. And notice that this and that, they both have A square, right? So I can factor that out. And then we were left with sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha. And this is equal to delta A square plus delta B square on the right hand side. And now what is this? This is nicely equal to one, isn't it? So in the end, we see we will have a square equal to a square plus b square. So this is the condition on the capital A. And you see, I'm not going to isolate the capital A for you guys neither, because you may have positive A or negative A. And as I said, you may have a different combination of capital A and alpha to make this work. So I will just leave this for you guys. 